So it's a reset in terms of mindsets, in terms of the strategy around the event and around what does Polkadot 2.0 look like and how do we sort of expand to bring more people in. The Defiant is here at the Sub-Zero Polkadot Conference in Bangkok and we're excited to be talking to some of the key voices in the community to find out what's the latest in the Polkadot ecosystem. You know, Polkadot has been sort of going on for a while now. We've had sort of our flagship events with Decoded, which happens around early, early summer. And then we've had Sub-Zero, which is a tech-focused, sort of developer-builder-focused event. Um, and it's been a successful one throughout the years, but I think this one's a reset because there are new people taking over. Uh, there's a reset as well in terms of, you know, sentiment and sort of the developments taking place in the ecosystem. And I think it's important now to sort of branch out, get out of the, our sort of our ecosystem ego chamber and sort of branch out and sort of draw new people in. More broadly in the Polkadot ecosystem, what would you say are the most important trends to watch? So I think there's a few, right? There's like macro trends in terms of like, um, well, an event like today, I think is a macro trend, like a shift in culture mindset around how do we broaden out to get more people in. There are other macro trends in terms of, you know, the decentralized futures initiative, which the Web3 Foundation has done in terms of pushing out services to the community to come in and be mandated to do, such as, you know, marketing, BD and, and so forth. So those are the macro trends. Also macro trends in regards to third party sort of investment capital allocators coming in, being mandated to sort of deploy capital in the ecosystem, both on the venture and the liquid side. And I think more on the fundamental sides in terms of the te technology, the advancements, I think we're at a, at a, at a phase now where um, Polkadot 2.0 is going to come out, right? So there's in asynchronous backing, there's core time, elastic scaling, and these are all sort of developments that have been taking place in sort of the, the backstage and in, in development, but now we're sort of moving forward into its implementation. So I think we're going to see faster transaction times, you know, scalability, and, and people are going to come in and understand the value offering of, of Polkadot. I think from my perspective, I looked at Polkadot as a whole, there's kind of two big initiatives. One is to make Polkadot more accessible and easy to build on for developers. And so I think about that like in terms of bringing smart contracts and creating this thing called like the Polkadot Hub, which is going to be a home for all developers to be able to launch applications and projects very simply and easily. Um, and then the other one is, of course, to continue to improve Polkadot as we know it today, which I kind of think of as the Polkadot Cloud. This is like a, a Web3 cloud where people can basically launch applications and get all the resilience and decentralization and basically execution of a Web3 Cloud platform. Instead of Polkadot just being a blockchain of blockchains, it's going to be really a platform from anything. So really the idea here being that um, Jam basically allows us to take the same kind of technology and architecture we've had with Polkadot, which secures all these other blockchains. But now you can deploy any kind of application. Um, the idea being that we have fancy mechanics there basically to take any application, even a video game, even a long-running application, into smaller blocks and execute it and secure it by Polkadot. So really, you know, I think in terms of trying to become like, you know, a computer for the world in the future, uh, we're getting closer and closer to that. So that's kind of the two different verticals we've been targeting inside of Polkadot. I think one of the biggest trends in Polkadot is um, just how good it is as a crypto economic coprocessor, something that can run arbitrary code and give you a lot of security that that code has actually run correctly. Um, I, I think it's something very underappreciated about Polkadot as people think Polkadot and they think Parachain. Uh, but there are new projects like Hyperbridge that are starting to really take advantage of this capability that Polkadot has as a highly secure, efficient, crypto economic coprocessor framework. Um, and I think we should expect to see more projects making use of that. I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's a time where uh, Polkadot, Polkadot was very he ahead in terms of technology for many years. And you can see many of the core ideas like app chains uh, and interoperable bridges kind of playing out um, through other projects like L2s. Um, I think it's a pivotal moment for Polkadot to really get behind and focus on what its key value add is going to be and then bring that to users.